better, I better. Hey, welcome back. We've started our chat already. Uh, we are joined here by Pulitzer Prize finalist who is a San Francisco native and she's bringing that acclaimed play of hers back home. Christina Wong's Sweatshop Overlord is playing now at the Strand. Christina, welcome. Hello, it's so good to be home. Oh Hello, San Francisco. I know, okay, so you're from here. Mm -hmm. like, Grew up in really the sunset. From here. Yes. Grew up in the avenues. Like generations. Yes, generations immigrated here. My grandparents had a laundry in the Richmond district. It was like, yes, San Francisco was here in me, folks. And, and I'm sure they are so proud of you, your mm. folks. Um, this is a now. Yeah, now. Now. Oh, we'll get Pulitzer to that Prize in a finalist thing yeah. helps. Uh, I mean, oh, that did it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, it was like paper bag on the head. Uh, exactly. Our daughter does what for a living? Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, as a Chinese American immigrant and, and from families um, that value like education, kind of like certain jobs, careers that were more financially stable, shall Actual we say. jobs. Yeah. yeah. The money. I'm Actual sure they money, were like, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But nonetheless, you're super successful now, Christina Wong. I'm saying this for your parents' yes. benefit. Um, Listen to Kristen Z. Yeah, okay. How did this come to be? <laughs> Sweatshop Overlord. That's such an interesting title. What's it about? Yeah, so uh, I found myself an unessential worker in March 2020. I was all set to tour a very different show called Christina Wong for Public Office about how I ran and won a local office in Koreatown, Los Angeles. And I sew my set pieces and props. Yeah. And suddenly, you know, meeting in public was forbidden, right? We were all sheltering in place. And I saw that hospitals were looking for home sewn masks. And I went, oh my God, I have a Hello Kitty sewing machine. I have <laughs> I have an essential skill. And so I very naively offered to the internet, if you need masks, if you're an essential worker or immunocompromised, which turns out was everybody, um, or you don't have access to masks, I'll make you a mask. Uh -huh. And so this led to me over promising to the internet that I would sew them masks. <laughs> Four days later, I started a group called the Auntie Sewing Squad, uh, not realizing our unintentional acronym was ASS, and um, and found I'm myself. I'm starting to see how this is a funny play. Go on. <laughs> but I ended up uh, running uh, what was supposed to be a two-week, three-week thing for over 500 days. Uh, grew to 800 volunteer aunties all over the country, 350,000 masks, and I was basically running an army. Except instead of guns and bullets, it was elastic fabric and sewing machines, and and we supported. Some really vulnerable communities that had no access to the masks that were even on the market. Okay, so that's an amazing thing that you yeah. did and the aunties did, but how did that become the subject of a play? Like, what uh, do you work in there? What do you explore in there? I mean, a lot of folks at the top of this were like, is this going to be your next show? And I was like, I don't even know if we're going to return back to civilization and who wants to relive this all over again? But what became really clear was what I was witnessing was so bizarre and the amount of information I had about hospitals that had no masks or whatever, uh, or villages in Alaska that had no access to things. Um, that as someone who was otherwise an unessential performance artist, it was, was <laughs> just very weird. And so I just started to play out, to entertain the aunties while they were sewing at home, sheltering on Zoom, uh -huh. played out these stories of things I was witnessing. And uh, and the New York Theatre Workshop asked if I would premiere it off-Broadway in fall 2021. And so it became the Pulitzer Prize finalist for drama, it won a bunch of awards, and now it's this is the fifth city it's played. I've come back home. Wow, that yeah. is amazing. It's a very strange story. And, and I feel very lucky that my experience of this pandemic has been enjoyable and cathartic for audiences. Yeah. And that I get to I'm share sure it. people relate on so many levels. How does it feel to do a solo show? Just you and the audience? Oh, it's, it's like... It's, it's something between being a hostage and um, and and being like carrying an entire audience on your back as you row from one island to another. It's so bizarre. Um, it's like Groundhog's Day, but it's also just, I will say the pandemic was worse. I will say that the actual source material was much more enervating and exhausting, uh, but it is really exciting to every night to hear an audience remember with me, to have mm -hmm. tears in their eyes and tell me how cathartic it was and to experience it and to remember in a way that helps steer them towards hope. And for me, this community of 800 aunties that I worked with makes you know telling the story worth it because I don't think we got a lot of stories of yeah. of hope and community and resilience yeah. out of the pandemic. And I feel like Christina Wong's sweatshop overlord is that story. Oh my gosh. Were some of them at opening night and your parents like, were you so nervous looking at them going, oh, I hope they like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've seen it in different cities and they were wearing um, their shirts and hats that say my daughter is a Pulitzer Prize finalist in drama. So um, 
I think I'm still in the will, so I think Excellent. It's okay. Excellent. It's right. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so she didn't have to become a doctor. She's good. Yeah, um, I'm all right. Okay, so I saved a doctor. That's right. That's right. So what's <laughs> next for you, Christina? Um, well, getting through 30 more shows. We're, we're playing till May 5th. Okay. Um, I do eight shows a week. We've got matinees if, on the weekdays. If you if you don't want to, you know, come out in the evenings, come out. And um, I'm honestly just trying to keep myself alive for a 95-minute show eight times a week. All right, there so. you go. ACT, <laughs> go get your tickets for Christina Wong's Sweatshop Overload. Thank you so much.